Okay, so we're going to take a look at Unicode normalization. Unicode normalization is something that we use when we have those weird font variants that people always use on the internet. So if you've ever seen people using those odd characters, I think they use it to express some form of individuality or to catch your attention. And then we also have another issue where we have weird glyphs in text. And this is more reasonable because it's actually a part of the language. That's like the little glyphs, so you have the accents above the E's and stuff in Italian or Spanish. And those little glyphs all together, they're called diacritics. And whenever we come across diacritics or that weird text, we can get issues when we're building models. The issues with the weird text is obviously if we have someone has got hello world in normal text and we're comparing it to someone's got hello world in some weird text with circles around every letter, we can't actually compare them like for like because our models or code in general is not going to be able to compare those two different Unicode character sets. And the issue with diacritics is that those characters always have this hidden property in that we have one Unicode character, which is the capital C with Cedilla, but then we have an identical set of characters, which is, for example, the Latin capital C, immediately followed by something called the combining Cedilla character. And they together look exactly like the other Unicode character. And this is uh, quite difficult to deal with. So we have these two problems and we use Unicode normalization to actually deal with those when we're building NLP models. So I kind of said there's, there's two forms of equivalent characters that are not really equivalent. equivalent. The first of those is the compatibility equivalence. So that's where we have stuff like font variants, we have different line break sequences, circled variants, superscripts, subscripts, fractions, and a few other things as well. Now, we want our model to see both Hello World with those weird circles and also just Hello World as one, because that's how we read it and that's how it's supposed to be interpreted. And that is what the compatibility equivalence is for. And we'll look at how we actually deal with that uh, pretty soon. And then we also have the canonical equivalence, which is the thing with the accents and the glyphs I mentioned before. So you have a few different reasons for that, but the two that I think are most relevant is where you have the combined characters. So we have that C with Cedilla character, and then we also have the capital C plus the combining Cedilla characters most together and then we also have conjoined korean characters which i think are pretty common as well canonical equivalence is much more to do with characters that we can't really see that they are different but they are in fact different whereas compatibility equivalence is more to do with they purposely made them different and in reality their meaning is the same so we have two different directions for how we can transform our text between these two different forms. So we have decomposition, which is breaking down Unicode characters into smaller parts or more normal parts. And then we have composition, which is taking multiple Unicode characters and merging them into a single accepted Unicode character. So I've got this example here. So this U00C7, if we take a look here, this is our C with Cedilla. And we can see here, this is what it looks like. It has this C and it's got a little Cedilla at the bottom. And then on the other side, we have these two characters here. And if we just take a look here, we can see, okay, this is the C plus Cedilla. So these are two separate Unicode characters. And then we see, okay, they actually look exactly the same again. And obviously that's where our problem is. So what we can do is we can decompose them into their different parts. Now, these are already separated. So when we decompose them, we just get the same thing again. Whereas 
for our C with Sevilla character, we decompose that and we basically get these two different parts, which is the Latin capital C and the combining Sevilla character. And then we can perform canonical composition to put those both together and merge them back into the capital C with Sevilla. And that's essentially how decomposition and composition works. Obviously, it's slightly different for the compatibility decomposition, but we'll talk about that quite soon. When we take the fact that we have these two different directions, composition and decomposition, and we have our two types of transformations, which is compatibility and canonical equivalence, we get these four forms. So we have form D, which is canonical decomposition, which is what I showed you here, where we're decomposing those characters into its individual parts. And if we just take a look at how to actually do this in Python, so we'll take this Unicode here, and we'll just place it here. Um, this is our C with Sevilla character. So if we just print that out, we see we have that character. Now the other one is where it's kind of both together. So I'm just going to call that C plus Sevilla. And that is the Latin capital C, which is at 0043, which if I just print this out, so we can just see it before we put the Sedilla on the end, we just have a C. And then for the Sedilla, we just put 0327, and we get that. And obviously these look the same, but if we compare them, we'll see that they are not the same. Okay, we get faults. So to deal with that, this is where we need to use our canonical decomposition or NFD that we can see here. So to do all of this, we're going to need to import the Unicode data library. And then we use Unicode data normalization. In this case, we're using NFD, which is canonical decomposition. And then what we want to do is pass in our C with Cedilla, because we're going to want to break this down into the two different parts. So that's the one that we need to transform. And on the other side, we're going to have our C plus Cedilla, which is our two characters. And we'll see, which we just change this to normalize that we have true. So now what we've done is converted this single character into the two separate characters here. And that is because we've used normal form decomposition. So we've decomposed those, we've broke them apart. Now on the other side of that, we have the canonical composition where we build them back up into one. And to do that, we use NFC. And obviously if we try it with this, we're not going to get the right answer because or we're not going to find that they match because we're compositioning this back into itself. So it's just going to be this again against this, which are separate. So we actually need to switch which side we have this function on. So if I just remove this and copy this across, And we'll see that now we get true because what we've done is converted these into this. And that's how we normalize for canonical equivalence, which is essentially where we can't actually see the difference. On the other side, we have where people are using the weird text. So in our abbreviations, we have these two with the K. And that K means compatibility. Where there isn't a K, that means we're using the canonical equivalence, where there is a K, we're using the compatibility equivalence. Now, the first of those is normal form KD, which is compatibility decomposition. Now, this 
break down the fancy or alternative characters into their smaller parts if they do have smaller parts. So for example, with fractions, if we have the one over two fraction, that will get broken down into the numbers one and two, and also a fraction slash character, which you can actually see down here. And we also have our fancy characters. So where we have this fancy capital H and we decompose it into just a normal Latin capital letter H. And that's how the compatibility decomposition works. And to apply that, we want to use NFKD. So if we just take what we have here, and we're just going to switch what we're actually using. So I'm going to switch out the Sue for this fancy H. So a fancy H. In fact, we can just leave it like that because we can at least see what we're doing now. So we're going to put that here and we want to compare that to just a normal letter H. Obviously it's false, it doesn't match. What we need to do is normalize this and decompose it into the capital H character. So let's take this and we're going to use our normalize function again, but this time we want to use compatibility equivalence, which is a K, and we're decomposing it using D. And now you can see that we are getting true. So if we just print out the results of this function, you can see, okay, great. It's just taking that H and converting it into something normal. <laughs> and then that leads us on to our final normal form, which is normal form at KC. So normal form KC consists of two steps. We have the compatibility decomposition, which is what we've just done. And then there's a second step, which is the canonical composition. So we're building that back up, those different parts canonically. And this allows us to normalize all variants of a given character into a single shared form. So for example, with our fancy H, we can add the combining Sedilla to that in order to just make this sort of horrible monstrosity of a character. And we would write that out as we have H here. So we can just put that straight in. And then we can just come up here and get our Sedilla Unicode and put that in. And if we put those together, we get this you know, weird character. Now, if we wanted to compare that to another character, which is the H with Cedilla, which is a single Unicode character, we're going to have some issues because this is just one character. So if we use NFKD, we can give it a go. So we'll add this in. Let's try and compare it to this. Okay, we get false. And that's because this is breaking this down into two different parts. So a H and this combining Sedilla. So if I just remove this and print it out, you'll see, okay, they look the same, but they're not the same because we have those two characters again. So this is where we need canonical composition to bring those together into a single character. So that looks like this. So we have, initially we have our compatibility decomposition if we go across, we have this final bit, which is a canonical composition. And this is the NFKC normal form. So normal form KC. And to apply that, all we need to do is obviously adjust this to KC. And okay, we run that. We seem to get the same result, but then if we add this, we can see, okay, now we're getting what we need. And in reality, I think for most cases, or almost all that I can think of anyway, you're going to use this NFKC to normalize your text, because this is going to provide you with the cleanest, simplest data set that is the most normalized. So when going forward with your language models, this is definitely the form that I would go with. Now, of course, you can mix it up, you can use different ones, but I would definitely recommend if this is 
you know, quite confusing, you know, hard to get a grasp of. Just taking these Unicode characters, playing around with them a little bit, applying these normal form functions to them and just seeing what happens. And I think it will probably click quite quickly. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful and you've enjoyed it. So thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next one.